Good evening, good evening everyone who have joined us today on Facebook and on YouTube. Welcome to Ministries of Hope Christian Church Sunday morning sermon. We are located at 385 Garrisonville Road right here in Stafford, Virginia. We are under the pastoral leadership of Senior Pastor Reverend Flory Williams. We, we want you to come on down when this pandemic is over and come see us, come worship with us. We have been with you online for a, quite a while since the pandemic. Now we want to see you face to face since this pandemic is kind of um, receding a bit. Um, I know it's still out there, but you know, the, the safety and the 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 um the, the the it is being lifted right now so we can um congregate with um still protecting ourselves and and practicing um distancing so come on out for um worship with us when we are back in the sanctuary we would love to see you we would love to worship with you i am reverend Haverly hutchings and now let us go to god in prayer and ask his guidance and his blessings on this word today. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord God, for your word. Thank you for your blessings. Thank you, Lord God, for your love. Thank you for sending your son so that we, dear Father God, can be saved. Help us, dear Father God, to focus in on your word. Help us, Lord God, to hear your voice, understand your call, and let us obey, Lord God, so that we can walk in your footsteps as you see fit, God. Everything that I say today, dear Father God, let it not be of me. Decrease me, Lord, and let you only be seen through me and in me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We are, I, I just want to give honor unto the pastor, the senior pastor of this house again, that is Reverend Flory Williams. Um, I want to um, acknowledge her dedication um, for the word of God, um, how she has um, highlighted it in her own life and how she has lived it and how she has shown us not just by word but by her action that the word of god is real and how she has put it to the test and how she has um, come for it victoriously i just want to give her honor for being that example i also want to honor the the ministers of this house um i want to say thank you so much for being here in, in this time with us, um, growing with us, and let us and sharpening each other. I just want to give thanks unto my husband and my children and my family for their strength and their support in, in this time um, when we need daily encouragement. Last but not least, I want to thank you all who have joined us Sunday after Sunday, um, prayed with us on our prayer line. Um, I want to I wanna thank you for listening to the Word of God, studying with us in our Bible studies and just joining us each, each Sunday for the, the Word of God. And I know that something said today will bless your lives in a mighty way. Okay, let us dive deep into the, let us get into the Word of God. Um, today, I'm going to take you on a journey with one of the, the, the character in, in, in the Bible. Um, we're going to be walking with Miriam today. And I don't know if you remember who Miriam is, but she played a vital part in, um, in the, the allowing the children of Israel, in, in God's plan, in getting the children of Israel out of Egypt um, into the promised land. Miriam was one of the first um, people that God uh, called to to actually protect the, the 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 man who would be leading the the children of Israel out of Egypt. Um, she she was a great woman of faith, and we find Miriam in three books in the Bible. Um, well, we 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 find her life. In, in 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 numbers 
and in in um, in Exodus, of course, in Numbers, and we also heard of her in in Micah. Um, she was a, a great woman of faith. Um, the 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 book of in the book of Numbers and um, Exodus. Um, was written by Moses, but it depicts from his birth, from Moses' birth, and even a little bit before his birth um, in, in Exodus, um, it shows Sarah here, even though she wasn't named, it was in, in Exodus chapter 2, we, not Sarah, but um, Miriam, Miriam, forgive me. We we see Miriam in in Exodus chapter two, and we see where she wasn't named. The in Exodus chapter two, it tells us, um, and if you would turn there with me in Exodus chapter two and verse three, it says, um, when she could no longer hide him, she um, is referring to um, Moses's mother. When she could no longer hide him, she took him from an ark and uh, a bush, a bulrush, and dude it, um, flagged it by the, dued it with slime and pitch, and put the child therein, and he and she led led it in the flag of the river bank, and his sister stood afar off. And with what would be done to him? So the sister right here that is being mentioned is Miriam. Now, Miriam, this is in a time when Pharaoh was um, gave the decree to kill all the um, the baby boys that was born, and Moses's mother hid him for about three months. And when he, she could no longer hide him, she decided that she is going to try to save his life by making this basket and putting slime and everything on it to prevent water from getting into it. And she's going to put it in the, in the, in the river. She didn't just place it anywhere in that river. She placed it at the place where she knew that Pharaoh's, um, Pharaoh's daughter would come and have her daily bath. And she wanted to, to protect the baby. She was following the, uh, at that time, um, and this is my saying, um, in the instructions of God, because God has ordained that Moses was going to be the one that laid the children of Israel out of Egypt into the promised land. So, I am um, in, in thinking in the line of the whole, the work of the Holy Spirit, working through Moses' mom, place the, ch the, the child, uh, Moses, the baby Moses, at this strategic spot where she knew that he would be seen by Pharaoh's daughter. She also knew that Pharaoh's daughter didn't have no children. And um, she had great faith in Miriam and set Miriam as a, as a child herself to, to stay and watch. It says his sister took stood afar off and with what would be done to him, which means she was watching the basket to see what would be done to the baby. Now, Pharaoh's daughter came down to wash herself when we read um, further down in the story, and then the baby starts crying. So when the baby starts crying, of course, um, being a woman, your, your motherly instinct is going to kick in whenever you hear of a child cry. No matter where you are, and as a woman, whether you have children or not, you, you hear a child cry, you're going you're gonna to turn, you're going to look because you are made to nurture you are made to 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 um, pay attention to the cries or the noises that children makes so when pharaoh's daughter 
went and get the the child out of the roof sent she didn't go herself because she's a princess so you 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 know she has her her um um helpers her maids there by her um she sent here the baby um um cry and so she sent her maid to fetch the child so what no miriam is still standing afar off watching all this that is taking place so when the maid went and fetched the baby look at the bravery of miriam she did not no longer think about herself she didn't she 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 was she she was devoted to com, um, obeying the, the the commands the orders of her mother and i'm um in, in standing in line with the holy spirit the holy spirit has led the mother to put the basket at that strategic spot so the child miriam was told by her mom to stay and 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 watch this basket now while she was watching this basket all this took place now instead of leaving and running back to go tell his mother her mother that oh the pharaoh's daughter came and took the baby she wasn't leaving anything to chance she wasn't um i'm um, going to leave and and have someone else be get the chance of taking care of her brother so what she did she did not think about herself remember the decree was out to kill all all all, all these, these babies at this time right so when um she come forth she could have been killed because and the baby could have been killed but when god is in the when god has ordained it when god has said it it is already done so miriam didn't was not paralyzed by the fear of man but she in turn was motivated by the fear of god so she went out and she talked to pharaoh's daughter and she said can i find a a a, a hebrew woman because now the, the the pharaoh daughter knew that this was not an egyptian child because egyptian children would not be there they're not being killed. So Pharaoh's daughter um, took the child in, and he he says the 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 and Pharaoh daughter the, the 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 word of God says, and his sister to Pharaoh's daughter, shall I go and call thee a Hebrew woman so that she could nurse the child, right? So it didn't have to be moses's mother that she was gonna call because all these these brand new moms were losing their children but when god has put it in place everything is going to work according to the plan of god so not only was moses saved by god through miriam and uh, moses's mother moses was going to now be placed back into the care of his own mother so that he could be nursed and he could be taught about the Hebrew culture. So the word of God says, Pharaoh, Pharaoh's daughter said unto her to take this child and nurse it for her. Right, so he Pharaoh's daughter didn't take the child Moses at the same time. She gave Moses back to her own his own mother because Miriam stepped up and protected her brother. She protected him to the point where he is now placed back under the, the the protection of his own mother and not only that his mother was paid by pharaoh's daughter to nurse the child right so god makes sure that the mother 
didn't even wasn't wasn't only taking care of her child but she was well compensated for taking care of her own child so miriam right there acted as a protector over Moses, making sure that Moses was groomed in the right field, was making sure that the right word was poured into Moses from he was a baby, making sure that the Moses was fed by the right sincere milk from his own mother. Miriam displayed such bravery. Remember, Miriam was a slave herself. So um, even stepping out and speaking up would um, put her life in danger, right? But Miriam was also ordained by God to lead the children of Israel up, out of, 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 of Egypt to play her part because as i said in micah chapter 6 and verse 4 says for i brought thee up out of the land of egypt and redeemed thee out of the house of servants and sent for thee moses aaron and miriam so moses aaron and miriam was sent and given specific tasks specific job how to lead the children of Israel out of bondage. They were surrounded by hardship. They, we, 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 when we are surrounded by, by hardship in our life, just like Miriam was surrounded by hardship, what is our action? Are we brave? Are we intimidated by the hardship? Are we paralyzed by, by the will of man or the what is going on around us? Or are we going to listen and come to and call upon the name of Jesus so that he can carry us through the storm? He can carry us through our hardship. He can protect us and show us the way to stand up and behold his salvation. Because right there when Miriam stand up, the salvation of the Lord took over and saved Moses from being paralyzed, from being um, killed, from being um, uh, taken away and killed by Pharaoh. So even at such a tender age, um, Miriam was showing great obedience to the will of God. She did not fear losing her own life. She only cared about putting first the welfare of her brother. Miriam knew hardship, but um, God sent uh, uh, the deliverance. And in this story, God, God, you you hear that God is now delivering the children of Israel out of Egypt. Why did God choose this time to deliver them? Because the story told us that God heard their cry for help. Exodus 3 verse, verse 7 says, And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which is in Egypt, and I have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrow. God has heard your cry. God knows that you are bounded by the things of this world, which made make it hard for you to focus on what God wants you to do. God hear your cry. All you have to do now is answer his call because he is trying to point you in the direction that you should go. But when you are distracted by the things around you, when you are not setting all your attention on God, then you're not seeking him. You're not seeking him first so that everything else can line up and come to pass in your life. God says, if he shall call upon me, I will answer him 
and I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. God is waiting to show you his salvation. All you have to do in times of hardship, even though there was slavery all around Miriam, Miriam stand up and Miriam did not, was not uh, um, paralyzed by, by the, the fear of it, what, is, what would happen to him or think about what would happen to her. Miriam obeyed just obeyed her mother because her mother was led by the spirit of god miriam watched over moses miriam took care of moses miriam made sure that moses was taken care of by his own mother miriam suggested that the mother, the nurse, she would go find the nurse to be employed by Pharaoh's daughter, a nurse, a Hebrew nurse maybe. So Miriam was being also being instructed by God what to say in the time because she did not think of herself. She was reacting selfless service. So you don't, you don't have to try to say things for God. God will give you the speech that you need when you need it, when you're acting in the, the will of the Holy Spirit. When you're acting in the will of the Holy Spirit, when you put everything aside and you're acting in, in righteousness, God will put the words that you want you need to say in your mouth some of us say we can't pray but all you gotta do is be obedient and kneel down god will put the word in your mouth that you need to pray god will allow you to recognize and and identify what you need to confess to him and when you need to confess it so miriam was was also a prophetess it tells us in Exodus 15, verse 20 and 21, that when the children, when Moses grew up and, and became the, the, the one that God chose and sent in there to Pharaoh and did all those miracles and brought the children of Israel out of Egypt and got to the Red Sea and Moses stretched his rod across the water um, as, as was commanded by the Lord. And Moses and the Red Sea part opened, and Moses went through. When they got on the other side, and Miriam saw all these, Miriam was the first one to lead the first woman ministry with children and all the women when they crossed the Red Sea. It, the, the verse 20 of Exodus 15 says, And Miriam the prophetess, the sister of Aaron, took a timbrel in her hand and all the women went out before her with timbrels and danced and Miriam answered them and sing unto the Lord with, with um, that he that has trumpet and glorious gloriously the and trumpeted gloriously the horses and and his rider had been thrown in the sea this is praise this is worship. This is what we sing about the glorious uh, miracles of God in our lives. This is where you see in the Bible, the first place that a woman is called a prophetess because she is there prophesying and dancing and, 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 and praising the Lord. So Miriam was also a praiser. When we come through our, our hardship, we have to praise the Lord. We have to give him thanks and not be like most of these um, who have come through and overcome hardship. And as soon as we come through and overcome our hardship, we don't remember the promises we made to God. When we were going through our hardship, we lose focus. 
We have to stay focused on the word of God. We have to stay focused on the promises of God. We have to stay focused on our purpose that God has given us. Miriam lost focus. When you go over to um, Numbers chapter 12, you will see where Miriam spoke out against the man of God that he, she saved, that she knew that God ordained. But now that she's a prophetess, she, she spoke out with Aaron against Moses um, because um, Moses was married to an Egyptian woman. She knows that Moses does not do anything that God hasn't ordained him to do. But yet still, she took it upon herself to speak out and, and anger God because now she's taking things in her own hands. Just like on, on Sunday, when we, we um, what, not Sunday, last night, when we, um, Wednesday, Wednesday, when we read about the, the, um, the, the spies that was sent up by Joshua to go spy out the, the, the land after they took the, um, the wall of Jericho. And they didn't, they, 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 now they were, they, they were so overconfident that they know that they can go take this land and there was there was they, they got their their tails whipped so bad they, the hundreds of them died just like with miriam she she was she's now a prophetess and and she is 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 now zealous of moses she is now saying how um, Moses thinks that uh, he's the only one God called, that she wants to be equal. But if she was equal to Moses, God would have placed her there from the beginning. She knew she was not equal to Moses and God did not call her in that capacity. There's a whole lot of us that when we are called into a capacity, instead of staying, staying focused on the capacity that we are called in, we start looking at other people's jobs and titles. We start looking elsewhere where we have no business looking at. And then when we, we start talking out about it, God has to put us back in our place and humble us. Miriam was um, humbled by God. Miriam was, when God got angry, Miriam, um, he came down and spoke and, and came down in a cloud over the tabernacle and behold, Miriam became leprosy. She was white as snow. And in those days, the, le the leprosy didn't, was, not, was put out of the camp. So Miriam had to go outside the gates because now she was not even welcome among the people that she helped save because of her disobedience, because of her pride, because of her jealousy. That's when she fell from, from status. But even in those times when they were coming up against Moses, Moses cried out on her behalf and cried to God and said, Heal her now, O God, I beseech thee. But Miriam was cut off from the camp for seven days. And Moses wouldn't leave. He asked God to, to heal. She would, he wouldn't leave um, her where she was cut off. It says the people journeyed not until Miriam was brought in again. And afterwards, after she was brought back in, after God answered um, Moses' um, prior, after she was punished severely, then they could walk on again. M Miriam was not heard from again or heard about again until in, in um, Numbers, uh, 
Numbers chapter 20, when we heard that she died. When we heard of her passing in Numbers chapter 20 and verse 1, it says, when they, the children of Israel, even the whole congregation, in um, it, when when then they came, then came the children of Israel, even the whole congregation into the desert of Zen in the first month, and the people abode there in Kadesh, and Miriam died there and was buried there. God humbled Miriam. God made her put her back in her place. When you lose focus, God will his presence will move from you, and you will see and acknowledge that he is no longer with you. If you lose focus of what you need to do, if you do not obey God's word, if you come up against his will. There's, there's sometimes when I've witnessed that there's people that are, are called by God, and once they're called by God, they do not want to stay in their lane. They want to go, go, um, take, take over. You can go above and beyond in your own lane. But when you start stepping over in somebody else's calling, God is going to put you back in your lane. You need to stay focused. Stay focused on your call. Stay focused on your life. Stay focused on Jesus Christ. That's why he says, that's why he says, seek ye first. If you're seeking someone, you cannot be focused on something else. He says, set your affection on, um, on the things of God. You have to set your eyes upon the prize. God is calling you. God wants you to get focused. God wants you to, to read his word, study his word, understand his call, and get focused. Stop with all the distractions that are going on around you. Stop being um, distracted by the things of flesh and become jealousy and prideful and think that you can, can go and do it without God ordaining it. Because when God says it, that settles it. So be ordained by God and stay in the will of God that he has for you. Do not try it. God was walking. God had Miriam on the path until she decided to try to become more than what God has her doing. She tried to take over the job of Moses. Now, if God wanted her to help Moses, he would have ordained her to help Moses. Stop trying to help God to do the things that he wants you to do. Don't reach out to anybody else. Don't try to play God in your life. God has that covered. All you have to do is answer the call, obey his voice, and know that salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to man by which you must be saved. Focus on the word of God. Focus on what God has for you. You hear him calling you. Focus on his voice. Go and move towards him. And trust me, there is no regret. What do you got to lose? There's nothing that you got to lose. Romans 10 and verse 9 and 10 says, If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that he rise again from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believe and is justified and with the mouth one confess and is saved. God is calling you tonight. He wants you to confess with your mouth and be saved. He wants you to focus on him. He wants you to focus on Jesus Christ. That is why he 
send him to be the sacrificial lamb so that you can focus on his examples. You can focus on him and you can be saved. You have heard the word of God. You have heard him pleading to you. Jesus is speaking to you. Do not turn away from him tonight. Pray this prayer with me right now and confess your sins to him. If you are, are, a, uh, are a backslider, turn around. God is calling you. He loves you. And he wants you to, to, to just obey his voice. Grace is yours. Accept it right now. Pray with me so that Christ can give you life and life more abundantly. And Jesus Christ can start something anew in your life today. Close your eyes and, and pray with me right now. Let us pray. Dear God, I confess that I'm a sinner in need of your salvation. I believe you died on the cross for my sins and rose again from the dead. Come into my heart, Lord, and change my life. I turn from my sin, and I invite you to change my life. I receive you, Lord, as my Savior and Lord, and I choose to follow you for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 If you have prayed that prayer, let me be the first one to welcome you into the house, into the arms, into the body of Jesus Christ. You are saved just by praying that prayer. But it doesn't stop there. Now you got to believe and now you got to find a Bible-based church and now you got to start drinking that sincere milk that is in the word of God, just like Moses did. He was not only found, he was given back to his mother to get the sincere milk so that he can grow up healthy and strong. You are now a babe in Christ. And if you have just given your life back to Christ and you need a church home, call us, inbox us. If you've just given your life to Christ, and you need a church home, call us, inbox us. The number to call is 605-313-5388. With an, and you will need an access code, which is 379-088-POUND. I will be waiting. We will be waiting to pray with you, to accept you into this body, Ministries of Hope Christian Church, so that you can have somewhere to call your spiritual home, you can get that sincere milk. It is not too far. It's just a phone call away. Thank you so much for joining us today. Pray with me. Lord God, I thank you for bringing us here. And I pray, Lord God, that something said will touch the heart and mind of your people and bless their lives in a mighty way. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for joining us again. And I would just want to invite you to pray with us every Wednesday night from 7.30 to 8 p.m. at that same number, 605-313-5388. Um, uh, access code 379-088-POUND. This is every Tuesday night not Wednesday, every Tuesday night from 7.30 p.m. We have Bible studies on Wednesday night from 6 p.m. on YouTube, Facebook, and on, on, on Facebook. So join us there, and we will continue studying with you the Word of God. Our Sunday school is an extension of our Wednesday night Bible study, but our Sunday school starts on Sundays at 9.30 a.m., Join us there so that you will not miss out. You, there will be no gap in your studies when we are studying with us on our Bible studies. Amen. Sunday morning sermons are posted every Sunday at 10.30 a.m. on Ministries of Hope Christian Church, YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook every Sunday at 10.30 a.m. Donations to this ministry can be made 
at ministriesofhopechristianchurch.com. That is the website using the Square Art of PayPal. Thank you so much for joining us today. And just be blessed. Follow God. Stay focused. And know that God loves you. Have a blessed day.